Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. My name is Nigel and this is Off Grid Van Life. In this video, we're going to be looking at this charger, which is an automatic seven stage battery charger. And I'll tell you why we're looking at this. It is because we've recently had a customer who bought one of our batteries and then had uh, problems with it. Essentially, uh, one of the cells um, uh, over expanded and uh, cracked the case, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, it was a little bit messy, and so we've just been working with the customer to figure out what's actually going on. So obviously, we replaced the battery straight away, and our immediate uh, thought and concern was: Has this battery been overcharged? Uh, what is the issue with the? What has caused this? And when we've been in touch with the suppliers of the raw material of the actual components, um, the the supplier said that's a very clear case of overcharging uh, the batteries, which obviously, as you know, we've spoken about it at length on this channel. Uh, we've put a, a BMS in all of our batteries, and so realistically, it we weren't totally convinced that it was overcharged unless the BMS malfunctioned. And so what we've done is we reached out to the customer, sent them one of our chargers to use in the meantime that we know is good and reliable for lithium ion phosphate and got them to send us their charger. And we said to the customer that we would do some tests on an old set of cells that uh, we would be happy to destroy if it did destroy them. And uh, basically that we were gonna test these out and make sure that uh, everything was all right, that the charger didn't damage the cells. If, if it does the same with these cells, then we know that it's more than likely the charger. And the, uh, one of the concerns that we have with this particular charger, which we kind of want to do this test uh, on, is that uh, it's got sort of an automatic um, selection thing where some of the smaller brands, more no-name sort of unknown brands that have this sort of functionality, generally speaking, I'm not totally convinced uh, about the reliability of that automatic uh, interpretation of what battery you've got on there. The bigger brands like Victron, et cetera, they, they are very good, the automatic functions in there. But uh, yeah, so that's what we're gonna be doing here. So what we've done is, this is just a uh, set of workshop cells. Um, they uh, work reasonably well. We've used them in, on various projects and tests and things like that. Uh, overall, I think that they would be fine for this test. We've just put on a daily BMS that we know works. It's again, one of our workshop uh, items that just um, we use for various tests and, and things like that. We've just wired up the battery in the normal way, 4S configuration. And uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna connect the charger up and charge the battery and just see what happens. Uh, see if it gets it to a full state of charge without any issues. Then we'll probably run the battery down and then recharge it and probably cycle it a couple of times just to see if everything works okay. So let's get this guy connected up here. I'll start by plugging it in. Going to connect up these crocodile clips onto the correct terminals. And so we've got charging voltage, mode selection. Automatically the charger thinks that it is a wet battery, not a lithium, which is interesting. Uh, it says 14 volts on here. And so what we can see here automatically is um, straight away that there's no option to change the mode selection here. So it's charging at 14.5 volts, 14.6 volts. So charging current, charging at 19, 20 amps, charging state, C4. C4 is absorption, finish charge. So one of the things that I've just only just managed to do is to change it to the lithium setting on the top here. 
Um, so just pushing the mode selection button wasn't actually doing anything, but holding it down seems to have moved it up to the lithium selection there. So now I'm going to connect it back up to see if uh, it charges all right. So the charge voltage is 13.9 volts. Charge current is z zero. And obviously because you're not, uh, it's not a, it's not going through the different cycles and different stages of a uh, charge for like a gel or a wet battery, um, that, that uh, selection doesn't show anything, which is what we would expect. Um, so it might just be that these cells are already fully charged. So I'm going to run them down and then uh, we'll charge them back up again and uh, see how we get on with that. Okay, so we've just charged the battery to get some uh, space to charge it. <laughs> I didn't realize that these cells were pretty much fully charged uh, when I started this. <coughs> so the um, Gandal inverter was running this uh, uh, heat gun. And so we're down to about 50% state of charge on the battery. So we're gonna turn the charger on, connect it all up, make sure it's on the lithium setting on the charger. And then I'll probably just leave it overnight uh, because that's basically what our customer had done with his battery previously. He had connected it and left it for quite some time. So I'm just going to leave it overnight and see how it does, make sure it charges all right. And then when it hits the high voltage disconnect, um, then the BMS should turn the charge off. And uh, <clears throat> then tomorrow, once I've left it overnight, I'll come back and have a look and probably discharge it again using the inverter to then recharge it uh, again tomorrow just to do it a couple of times, cycle it a little, little bit and see how we do with the charger. So we can turn this guy on. It's on the lithium setting, charging voltage, so that's all good. And then we're going to connect the crocodile clip here, that one there, and the negative there. And so this is charging now at 13.5 volts, 13.6. Uh, which is what we would expect. Charging current is 50 amps. That's quite a high capacity charger and uh, it's still on the lithium setting. So we'll leave this like this for the night and we'll come back tomorrow and see how we get on. All right, so we left this overnight um, charging and uh, the charger is obviously not uh, putting any uh, amperage uh, into the cells because they are fully charged and the main reason why we wanted to just leave it overnight was just to see uh, if it would do anything that was dangerous for these cells and so far we're looking pretty good um, so I'm just going to check the voltage quickly on this battery so 13.75 and if I jump onto the app 100% state of charge on the app. So that's looking pretty good. So what we're going to do now is um, I'm going to disconnect the, the charger, actually turn it off, and then we'll disconnect the charger completely. And then like we did yesterday, we are going to, uh, the inverter's already on, it's been on the whole time while it's been charging. Um, I'm going to set the blower fan going, the uh, heat gun, and we'll discharge the battery completely. I'll probably actually discharge it until it hits the low voltage disconnect. So let the BMS uh, protect the cells and then I'll charge it back up using the charger from uh, fully discharged. I'll just double check my app. We're now pulling 160 amps. So we'll leave that running and I'll just double check the settings. Uh, high voltage protection is 3.65. Low voltage protection is 2.5 and cell characteristics. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, cool. Looking good on that front. So we'll leave this running uh, and then we will come back and connect the charger back up once it's discharged completely. And uh, we'll see how we get on, see if the cells are all right. Okay, so we have hit the low voltage disconnect on these cells. There's no uh, power left in them whatsoever. So we are going to put this charger back on and we're gonna charge it back up from completely flat. 
to see how it does and whether the cells are all right afterwards. Okay, so turning it on, it kept the lithium setting. Charging at 13 volts, just under 50 amps. And if I check the app, zero percent state of charge, but it's taking 50 amps. So we'll leave that to charge to a full state of charge and then see how we get on. So the problem that the customer had previously was that uh, the cells were overcharged or something, either the BMS uh, had a fault and did not do what it was supposed to do, uh, or the more unlikely, that's probably the most likely, uh, judging by how we're getting on so far with the test, um, it's probably the BMS that was faulty. Uh, the next option could have been that the cells themselves were faulty, but that's uh, less likely. Uh, the, and then the thing that we were not sure of is how good is the actual lithium setting on this charger, and uh, so far, it's been uh, pretty good and, and performed fine with these cells. So we'll see after this charge whether they are still all right and whether they are um, charged fully. And uh, we'll take it from there. Okay, so we left this overnight again charging and uh, came out and it's absolutely fine. No issues, uh, no more excessive bulging than normal with these particular cells. And uh, yeah, pretty, pretty pleased with the results. Still a bit of a mystery as to what happened to that other battery that the customer had. Um, but at this point it's leading probably more towards a BMS failure, uh, which is equally con as concerning though, because the whole point of having a BMS is that it protects your cells, uh, so that you don't overcharge them or discharge them too much or something like that. So, um, obviously that's not uh, a great situation, but a bit of a mystery at this uh, point in time in the fact that we can't actually replicate it. So not entirely sure what happened there. The only other thing that comes to mind is that the mode selection on this charger is a little bit strange in that when you just click it, nothing happens. You have to hold it down and it goes to the lithium ion phosphate um, setting. So uh, maybe that was the case. Maybe it was still on the wet charge uh, profile, which obviously does the um, desulfation uh, stages and all that different stuff, um, which could have a, a very bad negative uh, impact on the lithium ion phosphate cells uh, potentially. So it could be something like that, but yeah, at this point it's still a bit of a mystery, but now that this charger is set to the lithium setting and we've tested it on these cells, I'm comfortable to, be, to report back to the customer to say it's good to go. So I'll send that back to him and he can continue to use it. Uh, but yeah, uh, we'll see. We'll keep an eye on it and, and uh, just monitor it, I suppose. But yeah, um, otherwise, thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Cheers.